Hi, welcome back. Welcome to Insect Systematics lecture series. So in this lecture, I'll be talking about Arda diptera, the characteristic feature of the Arda diptera and its economically important families. So this is where we are now. So since many classes, we were discussing the framework given by Christensen, where we discussed about the Entognatha sexopoda, which consisted of three orders, which are in fact called non-insect and hexapoda and then ectognatha sexopoda. So that means, so we are reaching to the end of this classification. So the last order, the 31st order, diptera. So excluding non-insect and hexapoda, that means the true insect group consists of 28 insect order as of now. So the order diptera are generally called true flies, which also includes mosquitoes. Etymologically, di means two. Okay, terra means wings. That means here in this case, the in case of true flies, only one pair of wings. That is, front pair is very well developed and end wings are reduced. So that is a very important characteristic feature. That's why they are called dipterans, diptera. And majority are actually small and soft-bodied insects. Mouth parts are generally sucking type, but it is highly varied in different families. Like, you no, know, in case of Pulicidae, that includes mosquitoes, which is of piercing and sucking type. Whereas sponging in case of house flies and in many other families, it may be poorly developed and non-functional, vestigial. Okay, Wing, wings are usually membranous, one pair, that means only front pair, well developed, they are membranous and end wings are reduced to altiers. Okay, I think it is very clear. So these are the altiers, so present below the lobe-like structure, which are called calipters which are the parts of four wings. So these calipters are very well developed in case of four wings. So these are the, these calipters are actually lobe-like structures present at the, the base of the four wings. So in fact, there will be two calipters, two lobe-like structures, which are called upper calipter and lower calipters. So coming to economic importance, in fact, dipterans are highly diverse group of insects. And as a result of their diverse nature, they have you no know, acquainted to very different types of habitat and may come in contact with the humans, you no know, you know, domestic animals or other animals, and even the in agricultural ecosystem. So medically, for example, mosquitoes, black flies, horse flies, stable flies, and few other insects, you know, in fact, sucks the blood, and as a result of that, they act as serious pests of man and animals. Many are important vectors of diseases like malaria, yellow fever, dysentery, dengue, sleeping sickness, typhoid, etc. So that means they acquire the you know, pathogen from the infected person okay, and then they transmit to healthy person. So similarly, they also you know, causes damage in veterinary, like for example, Pulicida species, which belongs to family called Ceratopogonidae, transmits blue tongue of sheep and cattle. In fact, there are many other such things. In agricultural ecosystem also, they are very important as yes, pests of crops like fruit flies, gall flies, gall midges, leaf miners, shoot borers. So as a result of that, okay, so they have as very serious pests of our cultivated crops. However, few of them are beneficial, like scavengers, they act as predators, parasites, pollinators, even they are do helpful in you know removing the weeds. Okay, their way they act as a beneficial organisms. So that means you can see here they are highly diverse group and you no know, can cause damage at times they may be beneficial as well. Coming to classification of diptera, three orders, three suborders have been you know, identified in this order diptera. They are called nematocera, brachycera, cyclorapa. Okay, listen to my pronunciation so that you will not make a mistake when you write the spellings of the suborders or the family name. So nematocerans have got antennae long, more than six segmented, longer than the head and thorax combined. You can see the length of the head, but you can see the antenna is very long with a varied kind of you no know, antenna type. Like it may be filiform or moniliform, okay, longer. Whereas brachycerans have got shorter antenna, which may be three segmented. And they have got a style-like structure, a finger-like structure at the you know, flagellum, the last antenna segment, which may be aristate type or style-like finger like okay short antenna cyclorapa also have got short antenna it is three segmented like brachycera whereas here in this case arista is dorsal okay here you can see the terminal arista found at the end of this flagellum segment whereas here in this case usually it is arise from the dorsal region of the flagellar segment you can see here 
which may be the sarista may be bear without ears or it may be eri okay so that's how we can differentiate these three suborders in the adult stage you can also make a distinction even in the maggot stage okay so nematocerans usually have got head larvae with well developed head so usually they are called maggots in fact so these maggots have a well developed head and horizontally working mandibles they can work them no they can move the mandibles like this okay so they are largely aquatic in fact these nematocerans okay brachycerans larval led partially withdrawn into thorax you can see nematocera well developed head brachycera okay comparatively no partially withdrawn comparatively not so well developed like nematocerans and mandibles work vertically they can move the mandibles like this they may be aquatic or semi aquatic see the difference nematocerans are largely aquatic they may be aquatic or semi aquatic coming to cyclorapa larvae with vestigial head you can see the well developed head partially developed head vestigial head okay under developed lack antenna and eyes mouth parts with a pair of curved hook like mandibles you can see here small no spine like structure is found that is actually now represented as mouth which works vertically and mostly they are terrestrial you can see aquatic aquatic or semi aquatic and they are completely terrestrial so that is how we can differentiate these three suborders in the adult stage as well in the maggot stage also so important families so we we'll take up these three suborders i will be taking about only the few economically important you no know, families so it's very difficult to dis no no discuss all the families so we will be discussing only the tip of iceberg very few are number of families so nematocera two families we are discussing plesidae they are called mosquitoes cystomidae they are called galmidges in case of suborder brachycera tabanidae ars flies acilidae rubber flies in case of cyclorapa syrphidae over flies tephritidae fruit flies agromyzidae leaf miners drosophilidae vinegar flies tachinidae tachinids sarcophagidae flesh flies musidae house flies hippobasidae louse flies okay we will take one by one we will start with the suborder nematocera so we'll start with culicidae they are commonly called mosquitoes so here in this case the proboscis okay the one which actually you no know, bites is actually the modified part of labium okay so if you have really understood the the structure of biting and chewing type of mouth parts in case of cockroach it is very easy to understand the the mouth parts of other insect groups as well so here in this case the labium in fact it's called proboscis which composed of six stylets okay this is the proboscis in fact which in the inner side it consists of six stylets n sheet so found harbored okay placed within this long labia okay so that means these stylets these six stylets in fact you know able to penetrate into the human body and suck the blood wings veins and body covered with scales so probably you might have experienced when you tap the mosquitoes okay you'll find the you no know, scales gray gray structures adhere to your skin those are actually scales like you no know, butterflies and moths antenna in case of females it is pilose type and plumos in case of males so how do you distinguish so male mosquito antenna okay i got lot of ears whereas females mosquito antenna will have got very few or number of ears at the junction of flagellum ears that's how we can distinguish the the gender or the sexes of both male and female in case of mosquitoes female sucks the blood from humans and other mammals and transmits viral diseases and whereas males feed on nectar so that's how you now in the the food habit also changes you no know, across males and females few examples it is egypti which transmits yellow fever and dengue anopheles malaria for example culex certain types of encephalitis filariasis like that so this is the proboscis in fact which actually grew in the, the top side which harbors you no know, six stylets okay this is electron you no know, microscopy you no know, photograph you can see here so i was telling this is the proboscis and which is grooved and the insect is ready for feeding sucking the blood you can see this proboscis actually bends as a result of that those six stylets which are packed comes out and with the help of pressure created on the head region in the mosquito okay which you no know, pushes the the stylets inside the the victim's body the human body for example and sucks the the blood that's how they work in fact so these six stylets are actually modified mandibles maxillae one labrum and hypopharynx okay so all these six you no know, parts are modified as a you no know, long needle like structure with the help of that in fact they pierce and sucks the 
blood. Okay. Uh, in fact, the adult mosquitoes, females lay the eggs in aquatic ecosystem where the maggots which comes out from these eggs feed on algae, fungi and other materials present in the aquatic bodies and they are actually called wrigglers. They move, no, they wriggles their body. In fact, they, that's why they're called wrigglers. Whereas when they pupate, they're actually called tumblers. Next family, Cecidomidae, they're called galmidges, galgnats. Okay, they are very small, delicate flies with long legs. Okay, at first look, they may look like mosquitoes, but they have got very long legs. Antennae long, many segmented and monily form. We studied pylos and fumos in case of mosquitoes. That's how we can distinguish. Venation reduced with fewer number of veins, fewer than less than seven number of veins, and very few reaching the margin. Okay. In case of maggots, in the last instar, there is a characteristic T-shaped sclerite. You can see here on the ventral side of prothorax, which is called breast bone or sternal spatula. You can see here. Okay, so this is the T-shaped structure which is expanded, which is called sternal spatula and breast bone. Okay, so most of these you know, maggots are gall makers. Other feed on plants without farming galls are live in decaying vegetation, wood or fungi. So when they farm galls, they become very problematic pests in agricultural ecosystem, like for example, paddy gall midge, Orseolia varizae, sorghum midge, Cantarinia sargicola. You can see around these you no. Know, Gall just make galls, very common on mango leaves, even in rice, wheat. Okay. Nowadays, even they are you no know, causing galls on the mango fruits. That's how they become very problematic pests in various cropping ecosystems. So coming to suborder Brachycera, we'll discuss two families, Tabanidae and Hasilidae. So Tabanidae, they're called horse flies and deer flies. Okay, medium to large sized flies, okay, comparatively bigger than house flies. Wing sailed in a single plane over the abdomen, you can see here, and face is not airy. Okay, so it is a comparative character. I'll come to that. Antennae stylate with large basal force and terminal annulations. So segmented. Compound eyes holoptic, contiguous, touching each other in case of males, you can see here. Whereas in case of females, it is not contiguous. They are separated like this, you can say. So this is male and this is female. Yeah. So empodium is pulvilli form. It's actually you no know, lobe-like. I'll come to that. See, they, again, a comparative character as we are discussing two families under Brachycera, Tabanidae and Acidae. So these characters are useful in order to distinguish these two families. So males feed on pollen nectar, like in case of you no know, mosquitoes, for example, whereas females, blood suckers and serious pests of livestock and humans. Larvae of most species are aquatic or wet soil or even some of them are predaceous, like Tabanus striatus and cattle. Okay, cattle fly you can you can call tabanus rubidus on ours that's why they're called ours flies okay you might have seen okay so they usually the cattle will be moving their you no know, tiles like this in order to drive away the 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 ours flies or they say tabanid flies which will be sucking the blood the next family acidity they are called rubber flies okay rubber flies means you know, just maybe feeling that usually they act as predators so long-legged stout thorax tapering abdomen, you can see here. Eyes never all optic, we were talking in the previous family. Face is bare dead, lot of ears. Whereas in case of Tabanid, I was discussing, face is not hairy, here the face is hairy. Okay, top of head hollowed between eyes, you can see here. It's actually no comparatively sunken. Empodium is bristle-like. The previous case I was telling that it's pulvilli form. It's actually lobe-like. Here, here it is actually no spine-like, bristle-like, okay. So most of these you know, oscillates are predators on other insects, including bees and wasps. You can see here it's actually, you now usually they are masked, they alight on the you know, tree trunks. And when the other insects are actually you know, resting or flying, they capture the help of well-developed legs and you know, they are predators like this. Okay, acilla species, Promacus, Rufifus, some of the examples. So we'll see how to distinguish these two families of Brachycera, Tabanidae and Acilidae. Face is not airy, face is airy, bearded, that appears. Okay, empodium pulvilli form, you can see here lobe like, whereas here the empodium, which is present, empodium is actually the, the last tarsal segment or pre tarsal segment, okay, with you no know, two lobe like structures which are called a pulvilli and a two class with a spine like structure or a lobe like structure, which helpful in you know, holding the substratum when they are actually you know, alighting or sitting. So that's how we can distinguish these two families of Brachycera. So we'll move to next suborder, Cyclorapa. So we'll take one by one. We'll start with Syrphidae. 
they are commonly called over flies or flower flies so naturally if you call them as power flies they may be beneficial as pollinators okay medium sized resembles bees and wasps over at flowers so very characteristic family you no know, level character of this you no know, sirfid flies are wings with spurious vine which is called vena spuria spurious means maybe you know, you know a common name you can call it as adulterated vine so we know that there are longitudinal vines principal longitudinal vines csr mca but here in this case between radius and medium there is a you now additional vine which is called spurious vine okay so this is the characteristic you now character you no know, feature of sirfidae so we can see here this is the spurious vine with no functional significance similarly harfoy cell which is closed okay you can see here this cell is closed so many visit flowers and significant pollinators of plants okay so most of these adults larvae that is in the maggot stage is actually in the have got very diverse features many of them are predators on aphids like this you can see here they are found within the colonies of aphids and they feed on thereby they act as beneficial insects and some of them are even scavengers that means they are aquatic and they found in the no water bodies and they feed on the the various organic material present in the aquatic body so they are scavengers for example eristalis species the one with long you know caudal breathing tube eristalis species and many of them like isiadon scutellaris are in the maggot stage acts as predators as in the adult stage they acts as pollinators next family tephritidae they are called fruit flies so fruit flies are very dangerous very important pests in agricultural ecosystem okay small to medium with spotted or banded wings so a lot of pattern uh, patterns are found on the body of these insects so sc that means sub posta second principal longitudinal vine is epically bent forward at almost 90 degree angle you can see here this is a posta this sub posta which actually bends okay bends and usually ending before reaching posta so this is a postal vein which will not touch to the costa but before that it ends i'll show that you know clear diagram additional character anal cell often with acute distal extension this is a anal cell okay it is sometime extends maggots feed on living plant tissues including leaves roots stems fruits etc you can see here in case of mango for example they acts as you know fruit flies many are important pests of agriculture crops like apple mango and acts as pests of quarantine importance because many of the time so we export or imports you now many of these fruit crops mango for example so many of the maggots or eggs may be transferred to other countries or when we import uh, these insects may get in and they make them very problematic pest in the <laughs> introduced habitat condition so that's why they are called quarantine pests for example mango fruit fly bactrocera dorsalis cucurbit fruit fly zugodacus cucurbitae okay few examples so i was telling that ssc subcosta epically bent forward at almost 90 degree angle you can see it's bent but usually will not touch to the coastal region so very important feature of tephritidae that's fruit flies next family agromyzidae they are called leaf miner flies probably you now all of you might have seen this type of minings especially like you know cucurbits or tomato many other crops you might have seen this type of you no know, minings okay that's actually caused by this agromyzid fly so they are very small flies usually blackish or yellowish very minor flies the characteristic feature is costa broken once at the end of sub costa here it is okay it's broken it, there will be a breakage so not be the costal vein is not continuous wings are not patterned like tephritidae we were discussing okay they are patterned here they are wings are not patterned maggots are leaf miners and serious pests of crops okay melanogramma is obtusa okay so in fact many of them even attacks the the seeds parts agromyza species for example this is the one i was talking about the leaf miner serpentine leaf miner which is called a liriomyza trifoli very serious pest of our crops next family drosophilidae they are commonly called vinegar flies pomace flies small fruit flies okay so they are small yellowish flies 3 to mm 3 to 4 mm long with bright red eyes okay very characteristic body not metallic like agromyzids costa with two breaks one at humeral region another at subcostal i'll show that here is you can see here. so costal region with two breaks very clear humeral break is called costal break extensively used in genetics okay one of the widely used insect for you no know, understanding various you no know, bio biological principles okay because of their short life span giant salivary gland chromosome and ease of culturing okay they can be easily mass reared 
millions, millions of these drosophilids can be mass reared. In fact, number of laboratories around the world are now are using this insect for various studies. Okay, example, Drosophila melanogaster. Next family, Tachinidae, they are commonly called Tachinid flies. At first look, they look like house flies, you can see here, but so here the body is airy, you can see a lot of hairs on the body like this. Resembling house flies, but are larger and airier. Post scutellum, scutellum is very well developed. So scutellum, you know, behind that another lobe like structure which is called post scutellum. This is this is the region, in fact, we need to search. So thorax, the last you know, end of thorax needs to be looked for for this character. Aristate antenna with a bare bristle. Okay, so there will not be any ears. Abdomen that is often covered in bristles. Okay, so a lot of you know, ears at the end. Maggots are parasitic on other insects, very important feature. Especially Lepidoptera, saw flies, beetles, Hemiptera, and Arthoptera larvae, okay, grasshopper moons. And important here is biocontrol agents. Okay, so you can see here we discussed about pests, midges, now insect of vectors, now vectors, yes, now uh, vectors of various diseases, few of them are biocontrol importance. Exorista sarbilans, it's called Uji fly. So when you rear the silkworm, silkworm is beneficial. But when this silkworm is parasitized, so exorista sarbilans, this Uji fly becomes harmful to human beings. Okay, so we as it attacks the our beneficial insect called silkworm. Sturmiopsis inference, which is a larval parasitoid of various lepidopteran caterpillars. That's how it, it becomes beneficial. So that's why now we'll find the varieties of habitat in different species within the family. Next family, sarcophagidae, they are called flesh flies. Okay, they are much bigger than the house flies, medium sized flies with black and gray longitudinal stripes on thorax. You can see here. Okay, and abdomen has got a lot of you now checkered structures. You can see here. Okay, silvery structures found on the abdomen. Okay, they are called checkering on the abdomen. Arista, usually plumose and basal laugh on the uh, antennal. Now, Arista has got ears on the only the basal region. So not a pleuron usually with three or four bristles. In the thoracic region, not a pleuron means notum is the dorsum, targum region, and pleuron is the lateral region. So at the, the junction of notum and pleuron, that's called not a pleuron region, with the three or four well-developed bristles. These are represented here, you can see here. Okay. Maggots are usually found in dead and decaying animal material, and usually they access carrion feeders. Adults feed on nectar, sap, honeydew, etc. Okay, sarcophaga, Africa, Sarcophaga bulleta, like that few species. Okay. Next family, very important family, Musidae. Okay, house flies, stable flies, arm flies. Okay, everybody definitely every day. Now they encounter the the nuisance caused by these no, house flies. Medium-sized flies with thorax lightly striped. Whereas in case of now Sarcophagidae, those stripes are very well developed, very clear. Lower calyptors nearly always longer than the upper calyptors. I was telling that lobe like structure present the base of the four wings. So these are, okay, don't get confused with the altier, which is the hind wing. So these calyptors are the, the lobe like structure, which are part of the four wings. Okay, so this, this is where you need to search for. And you can see here, these are the calyptors. Okay, so two lobe like structure. Here in this case, in case of Mucidae, lower calyptors are much larger, longer than the upper calyptors. That's so how you can differentiate. Arista plumos for entire length. You can see here throughout the length of Arista, there will be years. Sixth vine, that is A1 plus CU A2, which is you no know, fused, will never reach the wing margin. So they cut off here itself. Okay, very important feature. So includes many important pests. For example, Musca domestica is found in all types of rotting putrid substance. Adults are known to vector the typhoid fever. Okay, dysentery, anthrax, etc. Okay, so a few examples: Mosca domestica, housefly, shoot fly, Atheribona saccata, which acts as a no pest in various no crops, especially millets. They attack the shoot of these millets and cause damage. The next family, Hippobasidae, they are called louse flies. They may be winged or wingless. Winged species can fly, but as wingless, you know, maybe usually flightless. Brownish, flat, and leathery appearance. They usually they are tarsometrally flat insect with leathery appearance. Yet is sunken in prothorax. Usually it is protracted into the thoracic region. And they are ectoparasites of mammals other than bats and birds. Okay, so very characteristic feature of 
you know, these insects, the hypoposites are, the female fly produces a single larvae at a time, retaining the larva internally until it is ready to pupate. Usually, many of them lay the eggs outside. Okay, the larvae feeds on the secretion of milk gland. Okay, there will be accessory glands in the female reproductive tract, which you now secrete some you know, material. The through that nourishment, the larvae survives. And when the larvae, the mature larvae, actually, the maggot will be you now eliminated out of the body and you now it immediately pupates. As soon as it comes out of the body of the female, it pupates, which is called this type of reproductive you know, growth which occurs. And in the body of the adult fly is called adenotropic YV parity. Okay. So the common species which we found are dark fly, hippobasca capensis, um, usually. They are found on the dogs. Okay, some more families I told, you know, we discussed usually only the tip of the iceberg. So there are hundreds of families that have been described worldwide. Only few economically important families we discussed. So just I'll be naming those, you know, some of the other families. Tipulidae, they are called crane flies or daddy long legs. You can see are very long legs. Psychodidae, they are called moth flies or sand flies, very common in bathrooms. Okay, Chironomidae, they are called midges, where the larvae are found in aquatic ecosystem where they are actually red colored and they possess hemoglobin in their body. And most of the other insects, usually they are, you no, know, they, they have got blood which is actually you no know, colorless. Strachiomidae, they are called soldier flies. There is a fly called black soldier fly, Armesia illusens, which is nowadays well exploited throughout the world for production of compost because the maggots feeds on the dead and decaying of the vegetable matters, which will be you know, converted into a good compost, which can be used for you know, manuring our plants. Bombylidae, they're called bee flies, acts as pollinators. Foridae, they usually again feed on the dead and decaying organic matter. Glassinidae, which actually transmits sleeping sickness, very deadly disease in Africa. So these are the some of the families. So other families which just attracted my attention because of their characteristic feature is actually diapsidae. They've got stalked eyes. You can see here the eyes are placed on the stalk. Okay, here. Conopidae, at first look, they look like you know, wasps, but they are dipterans. You can see here, they've got you no know, altiers. Only the four wings well developed. So they are called conopidae. Their head is thick. They are called thick-headed flies. Collection and preservation of diptera. So collection is usually like any other insect group which we generally collect using sweet net on vegetation. Or sometimes some of these you know, flies are very small when they are you know, captured or swept. So they may be damaged and their parts may be damaged. Under that condition, they may the maggots needs to be reared to adult and they have to be carefully transferred to killing jar and then pinned. And sometimes the, many of these flies are attracted to sugar. Okay, you can place the bite traps. So usually fermented material attracts large number of flies. Whereas the aquatic maggots, okay, can be collected using dip net. And for preservation, larger dip or much larger flies can be preserved on the pins. So they should be preserved on the right of the midline on the thorax, you can see here. So only thing is when they are pinned, so those bristles, should, they should be now intact. Because if you damage those bristles, they are very much important when they are used, which they definitely used or identification to family level or sometimes to subspecies level. Whereas for smaller specimens, they should be mounted on points like this with a sufficient space to place the labels. Now one is now locality label and another is the identification label. So that's how they have to be collected and preserved. So to end with few questions, which insect group has hemoglobin in the blood? What is the family level character of Tefritidae, fruit flies? Which insect groups are considered as quarantine pests among the dipterans? Family with spurious vine on the wings. Okay. In fact, these dipterans worldwide so far, 156,774 species have been described. And in India, 6,337 species. And this is the third largest order of insecta. So followed by no, Coleoptera and then Lepidoptera. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, you can post below or you can email me as well. Thank you. Thank you very much.